Yeah, I'm very well. Um, I'm only recently arrived, so it's going to be a, a fleeting visit, but so far so good. The race, I couldn't believe how, how well attended it was, you know, a small island and still the, the velodrome was packed full of fans. And of course our first experience of the feedback from people at home watching on TV, so yeah, I was really enthused. I'm here with a, a nice new skin suit, so um, I, I couldn't be happier. Like everybody else, you know, the target is to, to have it at the end. Um, for some reason it feels harder if you, if you start with it early, so um, yeah, I don't know if we'll have uh, any rocky roads in the middle, um, but I want to, yeah, I want to be back in it by the time we get to Israel. It's uh, the most emotionally testing because you can start an elimination race and finish it two laps later, um, and you go home and you're like, but um, I guess now that, uh, well, I'm a decade deep into racing devils, and uh, now I know how to do it, so that makes it a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, I'll try. Um, Kirsten will try. Yumi will try. Um, <laughs> well, I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think both races um, can be precarious because uh, with the scratch race, just one move, like we saw in Mallorca, um, can sort of flip a coin and, and you don't get it back in time. And with the elimination race, wrong place, wrong time. There's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of moving pieces, so it's, it's really hard to predict. Um, but if you're willing to go hard, you have uh, better odds. The most dominant name here is Kirsten Vild with uh, her extensive palmares of rainbow jerseys. Also, I haven't seen much of um, 2020 world champion and Olympic silver medalist Yumi Kachara. She seemed to maybe not bring the best form into the world championships and then I, I don't think she was quite there in Mallorca either, but now we've had a bit more time. I know that she was training in Mallorca. Yeah, still want to keep an eye on if she's turned things around. I probably feel more uh, pressure and excitement for London with the home crowd and wanting to, to be able to, you know, put on a special race. And here I probably have more of a chance to, to experiment and kind of see, see how the rest of the, the field react to maybe something different. Um, oh, that sounds like I'm teeing up something big. <laughs> but, but um, you know, there's, there's more um, emotional wiggle room here in Lithuania for me. For London, I think I'll be uh, in a good place because I fly straight from here to London. I stay there all week. I'll be um, really well supported in London, um, and I think that puts me in a, a good position for the fact it's a double header. And um, yeah, we'll see if anybody else turns up with uh, similar support. Everything that I obsess about as a track rider, you're really used to um, marking contenders and thinking it isn't just about this one race, it's about having points ahead of so and so. or knowing that you can give some leeway to, to whoever um, and seeing, seeing the bigger picture, adding up all the component pieces and that's what we have with this over five rounds um, and, and two of, like I said, the most precarious events that things can change just like that. So yeah, I, uh, I think I've got my head screwed on straight and I, I see that big picture.